Welcome or welcome back to Sui to LP. I'm Sui and I hope you enjoy today's video. But before we get right into it, I'm obligated to remind you to click either the like or dislike button, commenting something down below and of course sharing the video so more people can see and enjoy it. This is very important as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I want you to know that your help is greatly appreciated. If you have any suggestions or ideas for a story, my discord link is in my link tree that is down in the description, as well as my Patreon and coffee for any donations you may want to send my way. Every cent counts. Anyways, I hope you enjoy today's video. It was Halloween, the spook spookiest time of the year. You lived in a decently sized suburb and had a job you could easily do from home. So life was simple. As it had been a self-made tradition, you were watching Corpse Bride on your laptop, while shoving mountains of sweetened popcorn down your throat. Your doorbell suddenly rang, pausing the movie, setting down your popcorn bucket and walking over to the front door. You quietly look for the peephole, seeing two kids. One dressed as a skeleton, the other as a pumpkin. Take a deep breath, you reached into a drawer you had set up next to the door frame, pulling out a pack of chocolate bars. Honestly, you didn't purposefully prepare at all for trick or treat. You only recently moved here half a year ago, and in the city you lived in previously, trick or treat wasn't really done as it was considered both too dangerous and too racially unaware, as the mayor had put it. It was just luck that last month at your local grocery chain, this brand of chocolate bars was reduced by 50% and saw hard candies by 60. Since you were always hamster shopping due to how expensive gas was these days, you coincidentally now had more than enough sweets to give out. You opened your door with a somewhat forced smile. Twick or tweet! With a quiet sigh, you threw two bars into the kids' sacks. Thank you! As the boys walked off, you remained at the door. Your first trick or treat, and you were too old to participate. <laughs> Just your luck, huh? Checking the roads, there were a few more trick or treaters out, but it seemed like they were going in the other direction. Scratching the back of your neck, you walk back in, returning to your movie. However, it wasn't long until the doorbell rang again. Damn it! You just reached the part where the little boy approaches the zombie and very cutely just goes, Grandpa? Which, in your opinion, was the movie's emotional climax, the rest just being the satisfying wrap up. Suppressing your grumpiness, you once again got up. But, as you looked through the peephole, all you could see was a dark red mass. Probably just a parent with their kid. However, as you opened the door, there was no one there. Okay, you have seen enough horror movies. Your heart began to pound as you slammed the door shut, immediately locking it, and pushing the drawer against the wood just in case. You then rushed from window to window, making sure they were sealed, and the shutters pulled down. However, in your haste, you always just barely failed to notice the big shadow looming, always in just a corner. He was already inside. And all you did was just lock yourself in a cage with the hungry lion. Shivering, you sat back down in front of your laptop. A mallet for self-defense placed next to you. However, just as Victor was reciting his vows to the titular corpse bride, you heard heavy footsteps coming closer to you. Honestly, you wanted to scream. You really did. But that would make things worse. Your shaking hand crept closer and closer to the mallet. 
However, just as your fingers took hold of it, something cold and sharp and hard was pressed against your throat. A deep voice whispering right into your ear. Did you know? It only takes 20 to 60 seconds for a drop of blood to travel from the heart through your body and back to the heart again. Multiple questions ran through your brain at the same split second. Obviously you were in a similar scenario before in the city, but you felt like this wasn't just a simple mugging. The guy's hand was painted red his wrists leading into the sleeve of a blood-red turtleneck sweatshirt. Turning around to hit him with the mallet was out of the question. It would take too long. And accepting your fate? Also a no. The only thing you could think of was to kick your bucket of popcorn. And so you did. Just in the right way to shower the both of you in roasted treats. Meanwhile, the plastic bucket hit his head with a loud conk. The intruder grunted as you jumped off your sofa, running into your kitchen, readying yourself. Seconds later, he appeared at the kitchen's entrance. He was wearing a red devil mask with horns. A large hole in the mask showed his wide, grinning mouth. In his right hand, he was holding a large knife. Your attacker was heavily built. <laughs> Truthfully, with a dead bot like that, if he wasn't trying to kill you, you'd probably ask him to buy you a drink or two at a bar and then see where the night goes. You were into stuff like that. He stopped just a few feet away from you. His crazy eyes were staring right at your face. Fun fact. A human heart can still beat outside the body. Huh, I actually knew that one. You said. And he blinked. Confused. Almost taken aback. He probably had come up with the perfect comeback to whatever you were saying, except for that. He almost shrugged. You used his daze to quickly snuck past him. Grabbing your phone, you rushed upstairs. Yeah, sure, horror movie cliches number three. Run outside, not upstairs, where you're trapped even more. Thing is, the front door was still locked with a drawer right in front of it, so that was definitely out of the question. So hiding until he lost interest seemed to be the best plan of action. Your first idea was to hide in the cupboard under your sink in the bathroom. It was crammed. And the smell of toilet cleaner made you a little nauseous. Minutes passed. Yet you didn't dare type into your phone the beeps and dudes would give your spot definitely away. And just like a cheesy horror game, you suddenly heard the bathroom door open. Quietly so. Lightly, the red guy stepped inside. The tension was killing you, but he would probably too. And then, the small door to the cupboard flung open. You turned to look at your attacker, his giant hand taking hold of your collar as he threw you out. He was heaving, looking at you angrily. <laughs> Fun fact, in an average lifetime the human heart pumps 1.5 million barrels of blood. Desperately you got on all fours and quickly crawled forward. The intruder was impressed, seeing how quickly you did so. He smiled, letting the chase continue just for a little bit longer. You were so much fun to chase. Back in your living room you couldn't help but notice that all your popcorn was gone. Taking all the knowledge of horror cliches you had acquired over the years, you took that as your hint. After all, every little bit mattered. He must have been busy eating it while you were hiding. Immediately you went to your front door, tearing open the drawers. 
Sadly, the moment you grabbed the package of candy bars, something sharp and hard was pressed against your back. Wait! You stuttered, pleading, holding up the bag. Who wants candy? You sounded way too chipper for the scenario. Well, that was the only thing you could think of. And without saying a word, the guy just grabbed the candy bars out of your hand, tearing the wrapper open with his teeth and shoving the peanut butter filled chocolate treat into his mouth. All right, that was a start. However, you reached the end of the bars at record speed. His mouth and teeth covered in brown chocolate, he turned his attention back to you. However, you were already at the next candy hiding spot. And to avoid yourself from overindulging on sweets, you hit them everywhere around the house. The more you made getting candy a hassle, the less likely you were to binge on them after all. I, uh, I have a bunch, you know, like sugar butts, I have Mr. Fuzzy Sour Tokens, extra bubbly. I like the apple ones myself a lot. Uh, I also got Monster Mash and uh, I got... As you were busy counting your stored sugary treats, you didn't notice him coming closer to you. Not until his heavy hand slammed on your shoulder. Your eyes met his. His size was intimidating. How about a milk molar? You held up the tooth-shaped sweet. The killer just took it right out of your hand and put it in his mouth, crunching it immediately. You're supposed to suck on them for a bit. This can't be good for you. After that, you forced him down on your couch by giving him all the various packages. You really had amassed a ton of candy over the year, haven't you? You should really hide them in a more obvious spot. But who could ignore bargaining such as a 5-pack of Pop-Tarts for only 150? Honestly, for some time he had considered finding a new hobby. Driving all across America for some discounted food was something your friends had been making fun of for quite some time. And it was right now saving your life. With a pounding heart you sat down next to him as you offered him sweet after sweet. It took almost two hours of munching and crunching when you suddenly realized he had devoured it all. And immediately he reached for his knife again. Taking deep breath, you had an idea. If candy was the only thing keeping you alive, maybe you could twist his definition of candy a little and get away that way. You bit your lower lip and opened the first few buttons of your blouse. Y you know, some people call me a sweet Candy, maybe you'd like that? You blushed as he stared down at your cleavage. Unable to believe that this was actually turning you on, you put more effort into it. You pushed yourself against his massive body, gently licking his neck. He shivered in delight, and your eyes flashed, staring at his knife. His grip wasn't so tight around it anymore. So as you pushed him further down on the sofa, you gingerly took hold of the blade and slowly, carefully, pulled it out of his hand. However, this just seemed to make him more wild, as he now wrapped both of his massive arms tightly around your small frame. He was cuddling you so hard it made it difficult to breathe. Practically able to hear the creak of your bones. And this guy was definitely strong enough to snap you like a twig. To keep the flow of intimacy up, as to not make him regain his bloodthirst, instead of gasping for air, you reached for his belt. 
someone managing to unbuckle it without looking. He refocused now on his mouth. The opening in his mask just big enough for you to kiss him right on the lips. It was then his right hand reached up, grabbing a big tuft of your hair, forcefully holding you in place, before his large tongue made its way into your mouth. It tasted like a cacophony of the sweets you had hand-fed him this past hour. Small bits and pieces of various nuts and shredded hard candy still sprinkled on it. You moaned into his mouth unintentionally, as you let him take control over the situation. Bob awoke an hour later, your unclothed form seemingly asleep right next to him. He stretched himself lazily, rubbed over his belly and grabbed his knife and pants. This really would have been a hassle had you taken off his beloved turtleneck too. And without much respect for your sleep, he stomped into your kitchen, climbing out of the same window he had entered in. Meanwhile, your eyes were wide open. You had just slept with a serial killer. And you liked it. You waited in your compromising position for a few minutes, before quickly too rushing into your kitchen, this time making sure the window was definitely locked shut. <laughs>